And that's why his administration is a failure. I have what it takes to bring Nigeria forward. My name is Eunice, Eunice Atuejide. I'm the national chairman of the National Interest Party and I am also vying for the position of president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I'm a lawyer, I'm a businesswoman, I'm married, I have kids, five kids. I do speak many languages, German, French, English, Igbo, Yoruba. I'm learning Spanish and Hausa now, I'm well-traveled. Uh, 136 cities by my last, last count, 76 countries or thereabouts, so, and there's still more coming. So, yes, that's in a nutshell, Eunice. I didn't set out at first to contest. I mean, I've always known I was going to contest to be president in Nigeria. However, for this 2019 elections, my primary purpose was to bring the at least newly independent candidates together so that together we could like form a very strong force to go up against all the um, usual politicians we have in Nigeria who are, I would say, the main cause of our problems in Nigeria. However, from January 10th to June 10th, when I decided, okay, I tried, um, it was impossible to bring our people together. Everybody wanted to be the president. Everybody expected to have their names on the ballot sheet. Nobody was ready to work with the other person. Everybody just wanted to be president, no matter whether it cost us the presidency or not. So I just thought after the last people who signed on to work with NIP uh, decided not to, they left the agreement. So we thought, okay, um, it isn't really that early for me. We, we've done a lot of work the past two years. I'm 100% in tune with the problems in Nigeria. And when you look at the profiles of all the people who have already led us so far, and the profile of some of these people I was chasing for six months, I am far, far, far ahead of them. And we made a decision to go like, okay, you must come out now and let's get Nigerians to see the quality of leadership you are going to give to Nigeria. And hopefully we'll get the people behind us. I want the people that are with you. That's it. You are going away. You're going to get wherever you want to go. And if I'm going to be the president of Nigeria, all I need is to get the people to support me. And that's what I'm doing now. The first thing they can expect from me is transparency. We are going to give an accountable and transparent government to Nigeria. Second thing they are going to expect from me is the quality of governance, the quality of leaders that we're going to give to Nigeria. Because it's not just about me getting power, it's also about the kind of people I surround myself with in government. And what the people can expect from me in my presidency is that Nigeria will have the best of Nigeria working with me to get us through the problems we have had since independence. So, primarily, Every problem we have in Nigeria today can be traced back to the bad, 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 bad quality of leadership we have had even prior to and after our independence. So, how am I going to deal with the problems of insecurity? First and foremost, who are the people in charge of our security outfits? Check that and check who the president of this country is. Then you see that there is a deliberate attempt to keep everybody in charge of every aspect of our security forces within this particular area of the country where the president comes from. That's wrong. In fact, going back the well, provisions of our constitution or federal character, that is an unimpeachable offense. The National Assembly should have by now impeached the current president because he has done a lot of things, particularly the selection of his cabinet, very, very, very different from what the constitution requires. So, security is a major, major issue in Nigeria right now because the people who are in charge of our security are busy doing now my brother, now my Pekin, now my uncle, now he help me, blah, blah, blah. So they are not doing their work. The first thing is to make sure that highly qualified people are sitting at the table, the highest part of the table, 
when it comes to security and then make sure that they are patriotic Nigerians. They are not interested in what areas anybody comes from. If you are committing crimes, you are killing people in churches, you are breaking women's uh, pregnancies and removing their fetuses and smashing them, you will be apprehended, you will be taken, the law will take its full course on you. So, we need the right leaders in charge of our security forces then we need the right amount of training for them and even when they do not have enough training invite our neighbors invite our partners to help so nigerian security problem is mainly a problem out of nepotism the people in charge are not doing their work because they are afraid of hurting their own people remove that and the problem of security will drastically reduce in nigeria you do not go into a battlefield where people are ready to kill off all your own with child's gloves. You go in there ready for the inevitable. That's what my government will do. We'll put the right people in charge of our security outfits. We'll make sure that they have the funding and resources they need to do their work. And then we'll make sure that we'll back them so that the people and the security of, uh, outfits can, be, can work hand in hand to make sure that there is... The, the, the unnecessary deaths and misery we have seen the past few years can finally end. Unemployment is a product of our economy. Like We see in Nigeria that a lot of good things could come to Nigeria, but some people are sitting up there refusing to let good things come because they need to be bribed. Remove people who want bribes. Make sure that every part of the economy, every part of the system is working. Open up the system so that investors can come in. There is no restrictions to their investment or their ability to um, do good work in Nigeria based on requirements from certain people in government or their allies to uh, collect prepayments from them for jobs. I have brought a lot of investors to Nigeria, a lot of businesses to Nigeria. And then at the very last minute, the reason it doesn't happen is that the, the person in charge, I don't want to mention names or positions, but the person in charge tells you, if they want to really do this, they have to pay me an upfront fee of $10 million or something like that. And you're thinking it's a joke. You're thinking it's not possible that this big hospital project can't come. This big real estate project can come. This big power project can come because somebody wants to be prepaid some amount of money. Whereas the states, the communities where these businesses are coming to, will benefit like in multiple folds from those businesses. So um, a lot of restrictions are in the way of our economy remove those problems and the economy will work people will have opportunity to do their business and in doing their business they'll be able to employ nigerians if we allow our economy to thrive the way we are able to considering all the great resources very very good weather we have abundance of natural resources abundance of human capital huge market that we can sell to if we can remove all the unnecessary restrictions deliberately put in the way by the crop of leaders we have in governance today unemployment will be an issue all this one that they go and create additional uh, offices in uh, government uh, uh, peristatals just to uh, pretend that they are dealing with unemployment we don't need that in fact we need to cut down on expenditure that we, that we um, on the money we expend on paying salaries and all those kind of things. We need to cut down on that and release these people to go out there and look for opportunities to work and actually make money based on what work they're doing. That's definitely the first thing my government will do. Remove all the policies and regulations that make it impossible for businesses to thrive and allow the employment uh, opportunities to go to the people. All our kids need to be in school, especially our little children. You see them on the road selling all kinds of petty, petty, petty trades. It's wrong. Our children should be in school and we do have the resources to make sure that all the children who should be in school are in school. We shouldn't be marrying off our little girls uh, in the name of traditions or whatever practices. We should protect them and my government is most definitely going to put measures in place to ensure that kids are in school and children don't get married off. Our youth are in school and they don't get uh, 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 delayed from finishing their programs when they should because of acid strikes and all those things. Education is a very, very, very important aspect of our economy and I believe it is reasonable to expend as much as 20% of our 
GDP on education. For now, they are doing 7%, and I think that's very ridiculous. So we should be able to increase a lot of the money we spend as a nation in taking care of the future of the young ones and at least giving those who are not so young but willing to uh, improve on their skills the opportunity to do so. I mean, not just the primary, secondary school, there are vocational schools. A lot of people can go to vocational schools. We don't all have to go to universities. We can still do practical training and still end up as an engineer. It happens in every reasonable society where people go to colleges or practical training in uh, offices or companies and then they count all those students at, uh, awarding them degrees in engineering in lots of lots of different areas of uh, activities we have a lot of hospitals quite a few but they are hardly functional because the funds that are released for the activities that involve health system get stolen you see that when they budget 10 billion for anything else not only one million will get down to where it should go so nothing is working the equipments are dilapidated some of them are not even installed we have a lot of equipment that are given to us free of charge by um, western how do you say friendly charities and governments and then you find these things are dumped in warehouses and they are rotten nobody is paying attention because it's no money they tell you don't give us don't give us uh, equipment don't give us uh, scanners give us money why because they don't care they don't care about taking care of the people all they care about is getting money for themselves oh no virus virus administration is a failure it's a total total failure um, Nigerians are suffering so no matter what you're doing up there if at the end of the day the only thing the people have is misery you have failed and that's why I feel Muhammad Buhari's administration is a mega failure so we need an administration that will make sure our kids are in school our hospitals are working people are not dying off like rats people are not getting killed just because somebody feels he can or somebody feels his tribe is superior to another person's tribe or his uh, religion is superior to another person's religion all those things are supposed to be curbed by the government our roads should not be like <laughs> dead, dead, dead beds or something like you come on the road and you're highly likely to not reach your house because it is really dangerous to drive on our Nigerian roads. Our airlines, our airports, rail, ocean. Like, think about every system in Nigeria. There's nowhere where anything is working. That's the sign that Mohammed Buhari's administration is a mega flop. It is a failure and it is time to get rid of it. Like, there is no way Nigerians will allow Buhari to take a second time. If we do, God forbid. I don't want to say it. I really don't want to say it. And that's one of the reasons I am running. I hope Nigerians wake up so that we can stop the misery. It is our right. We all have the voters' card. The reason we have it is to choose the people that become our leaders. So we should and we must remove Muhammad Buhari from the seat as president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He hasn't done a good job and he's highly, highly unlikely to do better than he has done. He has had three years, just a little less than a year more to go and he failed so woefully when he knew he was coming for re-election so imagine what he would do when he doesn't have to worry for a second term we can't risk it like those of us that are still alive now we're even lucky so let's not risk going to die because we are too afraid of what he could do to us now that we are saying no we don't want him anymore we need to become bold enough to go for it and i am saying good for me so that we can remove poverty misery Pains from our lives, we need to remove the hand, definitely. The anti corruption fight by the uh, current administration is just a sham. I mean, just look at that administration, look at the people with the man in that administration. They are the most corrupt Nigerians on earth. So, when you are fighting corruption and the corruption is only targeting people that are in opposition, something is wrong. And then, when those people in opposition now turn around and join your party, suddenly all the EFCC cases they have will disappear. Something is definitely wrong. So the so-called um, anti-corruption fight by the Muhammad administration is just a sham and it's a shame that Nigerians bought it or are buying it. Um, reasonable Nigerians should start asking questions. It's not about eh, let him start from wherever. No, no, no. Starting from wherever is probably not a bad idea. But only dealing with people you perceive to be in opposition that is that is unacceptable if you want to fight corruption fight corruption but then don't waste our time and our resources telling us you're fighting corruption whereas what you're really fighting is opposition 
you mentioned the Dilo Malaya case. I'm not saying that Dilo Malaya is not corrupt. I'm not saying that Saraki is not corrupt. All I'm saying is, why only them and why take actions that are totally illegal? You go and pick a senator and then you beat him up and then you trash him and you throw him out of a vehicle and you cuff, you, you handcuff him and all that and drag him everywhere and at the end of the day, you actually don't have a real charge against him. It's just to show him that you can mess him up. That's wrong. Uh, the Sarakis case, I had very, very serious issues with him, with him being linked with armed robbers, but it's already like hush hush, nobody's talking about it anymore. Well, all of these things are big, big, big embarrassment in most communities around the globe. People who have these problems would have already resigned from government, but because the current administration is making it look like it's witch hunting, people are not interested in calling for resignations or anything. Everybody's rather thinking we should stop witch hunting. Uh, 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 National Assembly members and I quite agree they should stop with hunting people who are not in their camp and using the name of corruption to um, molest them that's totally wrong absolutely I disagree with that process if you want to fight corruption fight it in accordance with the law if you have something you are charging people to charging people for charge them you don't need to keep them behind bars they are not going anywhere charge them and start your case prosecute your case against them if you manage to get a conviction then you, you convict them and they go to prison but all this shakara uh, i can do more than you i have power over you the security forces are on me i can use them against you it is wrong it is wrong and all of these things are actually impeachable offenses if the president is not able to deliver the national assembly has the right to impeach him so all of us obviously are watching and we're saying something is wrong in there and i'm saying also let's go in there and remove this caliber of people from government put the right kind of people in governance who can think first about the average nigerian before they worry about themselves these are the kind of people we need in government whether it's in the executive the judiciary or the legislature we need good leaders and i am trying my best to recruit some with the with the work we are doing at nip and making sure we are screening all the people that want to run on our platform or making sure we are selecting only those who are doing exceedingly well in passing our screening uh, uh, processes so we don't want to offer nigerians poor leadership so we are taking time to make sure that we look at all the people who are asking to come to power through us and make sure that they are very 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 good quality nigerians at least that's our contribution to this whole electoral process and hopefully other parties will copy from us and learn to give nigerians any quality leaders um i think this administration is really really a shame it's such a shame about the way they handle issues when our people were dying in benue mass mass killing in benue in zamfara in Plato very recently we did not see the kind of movement of security forces as we are seeing for a state election a state of less than two million people they have already dispatched about 30,000 police people, the DSS, like the entire security forces of Nigeria already in AKT. In fact, the governor was beaten up. According to him, they were using guns to hit him at the back of the neck. He was crying on live TV about what the Nigerian government, federal government, has been doing to him in his AKT state, all in the name of trying to take power from him. It is a shame. It is such a shame that the lives of our, of our people are so unimportant, but winning state, two million people state election is so important that we have to like send all our security agencies there. This administration is a sham. It is such, such, such a big shame. And I mean, I can't, I can't take any more of it. So I hope that Nigerians will understand where we are coming from, where I am coming from in seeking power so that we can stop this kind of madness. Our people are important. Our electorate are important. They are the people that are electing us anyway. So why wouldn't we disperse security agencies to go protect them? But we can disperse security agencies to go get help us uh, uh, steal mandates, to go help us win elections. Uh, are the elections more important than the lives of those people? To me, no. I am very, very happy to be with the CUPP. Um, it's a decision that I think was very, very, very necessary. Uh, like I told you earlier, we tried to form a coalition with all the new people and they refused to work together. 
So when all that conversation and back and forth ended in June, we decided, okay, since the CU people were after us and they were willing to work with us to bring good governance for the first time to Nigeria, like these old school politicians were looking for a set of young politicians that they did not even have any dealings with. In forming NIP, we had no business with them, but they are inviting us to work with them to bring a different kind of governance to Nigeria in 2019. We said okay let's take this opportunity not because we want them to bankroll anything we are doing or become our godfathers or anything just because we can sit equally on the table and negotiate for nigeria and nigerians because we know that a lot of these people most times they operate from a place of self-interest but we are here now to say let's bring quality people to office there are 38 different groups in this merge in this uh, coalition and we are one of them but we're definitely the one party that is only bringing quality leaders to this table let's work with them we take power of course we may not be able to control everything and everyone other political parties put forward to come into government but we can very carefully select the kind of people that are going under the NIP platform including myself now my presidential race is not ended in fact my presidential race got much more interesting following the coalition because the agreement with the coalition is all of us bring our presidential candidates when we have finished our primaries from the various parties and our presidential candidates battle it out with each other so there will be 20 30 15 i don't know presidential candidates from different parties after the primaries and these candidates will now tell the rest of the members of the coalition why it should be them so in that situation i have a very very good chance to get all these other political parties to back my mandate to back my candidacy and if they do there is a very very high chance that i'll be the next president of the federal republic of nigeria it was an opportunity we thought it was a wow opportunity and we said we have to take it we have to take it and we have to work very hard to make sure that in everything we do in every negotiation we have on this table the only thing we are worrying about is how it affects the everyday nigerian and as long as that's always the first thing in our mind national interest over anybody's political ambition and personal interest there's no way we will not do a great job with this coalition my name is Eunice Atwejide. i am running for the position of president of the federal republic of nigeria I want you to vote for me because I have what it takes to bring Nigeria forward. I am running under the platform of the National Interest Party and you can follow me on the socials, whether it's under Twitter or Instagram, under Eunice underscore at Day. You can visit my website. I've got my manifestos there, www.eunice.atwejide.com and you can follow us at NIP for all and you can also follow NIP at www.nationalinterestparty.com. Do join NIP as well. We are after bringing good Nigerians to power and we are after making sure that everybody that comes to government from 2019 upwards does so to serve and to make sure that what they are fighting for is our national interest, not their personal interest, not the interest of their friends and family and all whatnot. Join us guys, let's do this.